Listen, I was four days in New York with Benny Hinn. And we seen the miracle power of God. Pastor Benny sent me on that crowd. And I walked by the wheelchair section. Let me tell you something. It was like a bomb hit the place. People coming out of wheelchairs. I brought a whole tons of crutches and things. Put them on the stage. There was a lady who I walked by paralyzed. Now, do you know what it is to be paralyzed? Now, let me just explain to you how it feels like. You ever had your arm go sleep on you when you sleep wrong and, and it's just a limb hanging? Well, that's what it feels like to be paralyzed. And I walked by her and she looked at me and I said, do you believe? And the lady says, I believe. And, and I laid my hands on her, pulled her out of the wheelchair. She fell under the power of God. Listen, 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 listen. And I had no idea she was paralyzed. When she was under the power of God, she fell a wind blow through her she stood up and the and the limbs that were dead like your arm going asleep she begins to move she walks out of the wheelchair begins to walk and walked all the way up to the stage and she was whole by the power of Almighty God somebody say all things are possible come on raise your hands and say all things are possible when I believe now this just happened in New York a couple days ago and then I walked by the wheelchair section and I'm telling you this just to encourage your faith and I walk on the wheelchair section and Pastor Benny says Rich bring him to me now and you know when there's pressure so I just walk up and this is what I literally did I asked the whole section and said how many of you believe this is your day and there was about three four in the wheelchair that says we do and all I did I just grab him out by the arm and pull him out pull him out without even prayer and as they hit the ground every one of them were healed they walk out of their wheelchair because all things are possible when you believe are you ready for God to do something like that in your life come on stand up to your feet right now raise your hands to the Lord and let's welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit to do whatever He wants to do in this place. We welcome you for in your presence there is healing divine. No other power can heal, Lord, but thine. Come on, raise your hands and just welcome His presence now. My presence, there There's is healing divine. divine. No other power, but God. No other power. Can heal, Lord. Lord. Would you raise your hands and sing it, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit you are welcome. Sing it to Him tonight. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place of the potential. Father of mercy and grace, you are welcome here in this place. Once again, Holy Spirit, sing it to Him tonight. Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Tell them tonight of me for this. You're my father of mercy and grace. Thou are welcome in this place. Raise your hands to the heavens, everyone in this place. Come on, Joe, let me hear that. Just fill this room with that, that instrument, my brother. Just fill it. Come on. Say after me, Holy Spirit. Say it, Holy Spirit. I love you. I need you. I want you. Come tonight and have your way. I surrender all. I open my heart to you. I am ready to receive Make Jesus tonight real to me. Say it again. Make Jesus tonight real to me. Fill me tonight. 
deliver me tonight. Heal me tonight. In the name of Jesus. I'll give you the glory, God. And I'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, raise your hands and begin praying in the Holy Ghost, people of God. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is here today. Omnipotent Father, come on. Father of mercy. Stretch it out. And pray. Thou are welcome. Here in this place. This place. And you are welcome here in this place. Come on, pray the Holy Ghost right now. Pray the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray, pray, pray the Holy Ghost right now. Lift up your voices and pray in tongues right now. Come on. Come on, believers. Pray the Holy Ghost today. We welcome your fire. We welcome your power. We welcome your majesty. We welcome your glory. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the power. We give you the dominion and the majesty. And all the praise belongs to you, God Almighty. You are the maker of the heavens and the earth. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You are life. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that heals us. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, believers. Welcome Him, welcome Him tonight. Because of who you are, I give you glory. In a high note, guys. Because of who you are, I'll give you praise. Because of who you are. Come on. Okay. Keep on praying, believers. Keep on praying. The Holy Spirit is going to do something awesome here tonight. Who you are, That's right. I give you glory. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I'll I give you praise. <laughs> yes, God. Oh, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because, because of who you are. Who you are. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are Once again, because of who you are Because of who you are, I give you Raise glory. your hands and make it your prayer because worship tonight Because of who you are Because of who you are, I give you praise Because of who you are Because of who you are I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because, because of who you are. Yes. Lord, I worship you because Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. Praise of peace, and I worship you. 
of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my brother. Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider, You're my God. my provider. People of God, raise your hands and receive it tonight. Jehovah Nisi. So Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah And I worship you. And I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Because of who you are. Because of who you are. Jehovah. He's your provider tonight. your hands to the Lord believers let's sing it together because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise. lift up your hands and your voices and declare it tonight people because of who you Jesus. are I will lift my voice and say Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who. We worship you, Father. We worship you, wonderful Jesus. We worship you, precious Holy Spirit. You are the author of life. You are the author of healing. You are the one that prospers and delivers. You are the one that saves. You are the one that empowers. You are the one that do miracles so great. And there's none like you, God. You are great. And you do mighty miracles that are so awesome, God. Because you are Jehovah Rapha. Say after me, you are Jehovah Rapha. Come on, raise your hands and tell them, you are my healer. Tell them, come on, you are my healer. Jehovah Rapha the God that heals me today and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we thank you because you are the God that never changes the Holy Spirit will give you this service tonight have your way speak to us do as you please tonight let the power of the Holy Spirit flow like a mighty river in the lives of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Worship the Lord tonight. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles. They are so great. 
There is no one else like you. There is no one else, God. There is no one else like you. Once again, softly, please, for you are great. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, tell them tonight people of God, worship your Lord tonight. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory, please. You deserve the glory. And the honor. And the Lord, we Lord, lift up. we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve you the glory, deserve God. The glory. And only you, blessed God. And, and the honor. honor. Lord, we lift, Lord, we lift our, our hands in Praises to your name, Joe. Come on, raise your hands. Raise your hands and wave them in the presence of the Lord tonight. You that came here with a need, you that came here with a problem, raise your hands and just wave it in the presence of the Lord. And prepare your heart to receive what the Lord has for you. Do it now. You, whatever you need, whether it's a healing on your body, on your family, in your marriage, in your spirit, wave your hands in His presence and receive it today. Prepare your heart to receive what He has for you today. Just the instrument, just the instrument. Let the instrument worship until I tell you to, you, brother. Come on, raise those hands, people of God. Sora mamandre basa raba sakaya. Sitro bora mama mamandre le basa kaya mandre le basa ya. Sitro bobande le basa kaya mandre. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, God. Raise your hands, people of God. Come on, wave them in the presence of God. I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name, blessed God. Blessed Lord. And 
glory for the things that you have done and the things that you will do now and in our future we thank you for your healing power we thank you for your restoring power we thank you for your mercy we're not worthy of it but we thank you that you have made us to be partakers of your mercy we thank you God that it is not because of our righteousness but it's because of your love. It's not because of our doings. It's because of your great compassion for us. We thank you for it, precious God. Precious God. We love you today. One last time, raise your hands and tell them you love them today. Come on, just tell them you love them today. In your own words, in your own way, in your own way. Everybody in this room, in your own way, just tell them you love them. Just tell them you love them, you love them. Let your lips speak it. Let your mouth say it. You love them. Even though you don't feel it, tell them you love them. Even though you have been going through hard stuff, tell them you love them. Because he's worthy of it. He deserves the glory and the praise and the majesty and all the glory now and forever. In Jesus' name. God's people say a big amen. Go ahead and clap your hands to the Lord tonight if you will. And I want to welcome the audience that watches from around the world on the internet. Those that are going to be watching us on television. Get ready because God's going to do something here and it's going to go right through the screen to your house in Jesus name. You know June 7th which is uh, five days from now we begin church channel so we'll be on television around the world twice a week can somebody say praise the lord that's that's god told us it's funny because when we were five people god spoke to me and says i'll put you on television around the world but i learned something about god god you see i'm not gonna say god is a god of faith god is faith let me explain that you and I need faith to believe something. God is the source of faith. When God says something, it will come to pass even if all the odds are against you. Did you know that? I was listening to the Bible recently and the story of Abraham and Sarah. And how Sarah was a very old woman. And so was Abraham. And the Lord says, your wife will have a child by this time next year 
Sarah was behind doors and she heard that and she laughed. You know how she laughed? She went, ha! You know what that meant? She was saying, whatever. <laughs> it wasn't a laugh of joy. It was a laugh of unbelief. And the angel of the Lord said, why did you laugh? And she goes, I didn't laugh because she was afraid. She got caught. And I can imagine Sarah walking around with pain on her body because of her age. Her body will not function, much less conceive. And she said, God, I don't know. He calls a husband Abraham and says, Abraham, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know about this. Your friends here, but because Sarah did not believe. But the Bible says that Abraham looked at his wife and Abraham looked at himself. And the Bible says that he did not consider his body to be past the age of producing, nor consider the womb of her wife that was already past due. And up against the odds, he believed God. And because of that, God called him righteous. And a year later, that child was under arms. Now, if you put yourself on that spot, that's God speaking something against the odds. And the odds have to change to align to the word of the living God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God will not change his words i'm not talking about just his word his words because jesus said men shall not live by bread alone but by every word and that's not a singular word it's a plural it's many the words that come out of the mouth of god we know that the word of god is written in this book and on your bible this is called the Logos of God. But God speaks also in accordance to His Word, but He will speak to you Rema words that will benefit and minister to your circumstance, yet it will not be a chapter and a verse, but it will never contradict the Word, yet will speak directly to your circumstance. That's called the Rema of God. The rhema of God are the words that the Holy Spirit speaks to you concerning your everyday situations. I'll give you an example. If you don't have the money to pay a bill, and the bill is due next week and you have no money, has it ever happened to you that you're praying and say, God, I need provision, and suddenly the Lord speaks to you and says, it is done. Anyone? That's a rhema that came that is not in a chapter and a verse, but still goes in agreement with God being a provider. And guess what? You can rest assured that it is done means provision will come and provision does come. Somebody said the words of God. So when God speaks his words to us, because God don't need faith because God is the source of faith when he speaks his words it is impossible that his words return to him failed let me say that again you see you and i sometimes we speak things and nothing happens so our words come out of our mouth and return to us and nothing happened they're called broken promises anyone ever got a broken promise from somebody you know, you say, well, by next year, I will buy you the car you want. And next year comes and go, well, uh, six more months or whatever it is. Because we are human. We don't carry the, the, the life that God carries. But when God speaks and he says, this shall happen by next year. Let me tell you something. His word, it is impossible to come back to him and answer. That's what the Bible says. The word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall not return void unto him. But it will accomplish the purpose. Oh, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. God does not speak just because he has a mouth like we do. 
You know, sometimes we talk things and we don't mean it. You know what I mean? Sometimes we look at somebody and we say, hey, love you, brother. But, yeah, you know, if that brother does something to you, you don't love him no more. You know, we are quick to speak, you know, and, and sometimes we don't mean what we say. Right? How many times we have said, God, this year I'm going all the way with you. And then something happens and you slow down because we are quick to speak. But God... Every time he releases words out of his mouth, every word that comes out of his mouth carries purpose. Listen, there's purpose. If God tells you, I love you, there's purpose. If God tells you, I will, there's purpose behind it. And because they carry purpose, they will not return void unto God. Because God has never failed in His purposes yet. Can somebody say amen to that? Hello, are you here today? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today? If you listen to what I'm saying, wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. So, one thing you're going to learn about God. That God desires to release words to our life. Words. Within his words, healing is found, deliverance, provision, restoration, peace of mind, blessings, resurrection power. Within his word, it's found life. Remember this. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they're spirits. And because they are spirit, they carry life. You can never hear a word that comes from God and not receive some kind of life imparted to your life. Now I'm getting to a place here. That's what is important. That not only you read the Bible. Because the Bible are the words of God. But within the words of the Bible... God has rhema words to release to your life. And you will never find the rhema words of God until you first get to know the logo words of God. Because as you begin to read the logo of God, suddenly the Holy Spirit will come in. You know what the word spirit means in the original? It means breath, means wind, means air. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. He's the wind that comes from God. So when you're reading the Logos, the Holy Spirit will blow into a, what you just read. And suddenly something jumps up and the Logo, in that very second, it becomes a Rema to you. And suddenly that thing that became a Rema to you now has a purpose and a destination in your life. And if you come into agreement with God, what God said in His word concerning you, it will come to pass and it will never be voided. Hello? That's the power of God's words. So what is the devil's number one job? To keep you away from the word. Because within the word, you find his words. <laughs> within the word, you find his words. Within the word, you find the breath of the spirit. Within the word, you find life. Because Jesus said, the words that I speak, they're not just words. They're not just letter written on ink. They are spirit. They are wind. They are breath that comes out from the very mouth of the Father. And because they are breath, they carry life. Somebody say life. life. Say it again. Life. life. What is life? Life is light. John says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Life is light. What is light? What is life? Simple. It's the absence, the absolute, complete absence of darkness and death. I, I, I feel I'm losing you. Some of you are already thinking about something else. Look at me right on the eyes really well. And don't take your eyes off me. Because this can change your life. When Jesus speaks his words, 
His words that are spirit, they bring life to you. But what is life? Life is the absence of darkness and death, which means when God speaks to you, anything in your life that is dark or is dead, the life will destroy it and will bring it into a living thing. Somebody said the words of God are life and light to my life. Are you with me? So what is the devil's job to keep you away from? The Bible is boring. Don't read the Bible. You don't understand it. Or when you're trying to read the Bible, suddenly you fall asleep. Why? Because he knows. One devil knows one single line in the word can change your present and your future forever. So he keeps you away from one line. Listen, he told Lazarus when he was dead, he said, this is how we pray, you know. When we go pray for people and we don't understand the life of the Spirit, we have these long prayers, you know. Father in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray this. And we have this long prayer. You know why? Because we don't understand the life. So Jesus said, don't let your prayers be a bunch of words like the Pharisees do. Why was he saying that? Because he realized something. You understand one thing. When you carry the life of God, all you need to do is what he did to Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. And the dead man got up and came out. Because one word of Jesus carries enough life to bring resurrection to every dead thing in your life. Somebody say, I receive it. So the devil knows that. So the devil knows that if you grab hold of one verse, it will change your life. So he keeps you away from the Bible. So we fall into religion patterns. Have you ever heard people pray, Father God, oh, Holy Ghost, Jesus, I pray in your name. And about that. It's like, are you talking to the Father God, to the Holy Ghost, to Jesus? They're all over the place. They have these long prayers, especially when I go to the, uh, uh, the uh, I went to the, uh, mayor's breakfast in a popka, and then I went to the White House to the to the uh, uh, Spanish minister's breakfast with the uh, president. I was there a few years ago, and when it was time for prayer, I'm thinking like, awesome, we're gonna pray. And then this empty-headed preacher stands up there, and he opens a little book and goes, let us pray. Our heavenly Father, with art in heaven, maker of the heavens and the earth, the one that da 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 and we pray thee, O oh God, that thou will bless this nation, this, O oh God, this great nation of America that was founded because of thee. And I'm going, shut up. I just said, God, in the name of Jesus. My God, that prayer will change this nation more than your five pages. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They will never have a Holy Ghost men pray. You notice they always have this dead denomination of preachers pray. You're going to be the one that this guy is the bishop of the Anglican dead, whatever. It's like whatever that is. Because the devil don't mind you praying. Listen, he don't mind you if you go and pray in front of the Muslims and the Hindus. He doesn't mind you if you pray dead prayers because he's the one that inspires death. Listen to me. If your prayer life is dead, it's because there is no God, but there is a devil that put that death in you. <laughs> so he don't mind if you pray that prayers. Oh, our heavenly Father, and according to thine word. He don't mind that. Devil will sit on the front row and raise his hands and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he knows it's going to tickle the ears of the religious, but it will produce no change on the atmosphere whatsoever. Because he's kept those people from the words that bring life to the life of those present. So when they get somebody who knows how to shake the heavens, they will shake the ground and the earth. So the devil says, you got to keep them away. They're fanatical. 
Hallelujah. Because Satan knows it takes one word to bring death back to life. My God, if we bring a dead person right here and I have you pray, or most of the preachers in Orlando pray, they will have this long, full of verses type of prayer. And they still will not get the dead person back to life. It would be nice if you pray long prayers and the dead person comes back. Well, that would be nice. But they'll just pray and your word says, and your word says, and your word says, and the dead person is still dead. Why? Because there is no breath of God in their prayers. So, you pray all the verses you want. If it hasn't been inspired, it's dead. Jesus comes. People said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother, your friend would have not died. Oh, God, but I know. Jesus looked at that woman and says, woman, didn't I tell you that it... No, first he says, I am that... You know, he's not dead. He will arise. Oh, I know he will in the resurrection day. Then the Lord he goes, I am the resurrection Oh, God, I know about but she didn't get it. Then the Lord says, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? She still didn't get it. So guess what he did? He just said, roll the stone. Man, I can promise you it took more than five minutes to roll the big stone. It wasn't just like, Vroom. no. There were no mechanics back then, so there wasn't something a button they push. Bunch of big guys have to go and roll the stone, and maybe about five minutes. It took longer to roll the stone than for him to say, come out, and the dead person came out to life. That's how fast the word of God that carries life can change any circumstance of your life. It will take you longer for you to get up, brush your teeth, get your clothes on, and go to your prayer room. It will take you longer to do that than to speak one word that carries life and say in the name of Jesus suddenly the Holy Ghost comes and things change somebody raise your hands and say in the name of Jesus come on say it with faith in the name of Jesus say it again in the name let me just be blunt with you, all these prayer rooms that they pray day and night with so much prayer day and night this city should be on fire for God but no, we're in a lot of trouble you know why? because they're just praying words there's no life in them because it will take one prayer from one person who has surrendered to the voice of God it will take one in the name of the Lord Jesus to change the whole city to shake up the nation So what we have in prayer 24-7. No, you have in religion 24-7. My God, if believers that believe that the word of God is alive, and believers that will let the breath of God breathe on them, if you pray one day only, you shake your life. You change circumstances. Because God releases life. He says the words that I speak the spirits listen they are because oh. when I th when I say spirit you think right away of a ghost no 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 Jesus said the words that I speak they are oh. breath breath is life and then the father says the words that proceed out of my mouth shall not return void but it will accomplish the purpose by which I send it out huh. what is our job line up with the breath of God and let the words that he speaks to you manifest purpose in your life you see, why are believers defeated? Why are believers confused? 
Why are believers still struggling to believe God in the simplest of things? Because they have never received the of the Father. When you, don't when you have not received the breath that proceeds from God, your life goes in circles. Until one day, you see the Bible says in the upper room, the disciples, they heard all the talk. They saw all the miracles. They got the message from Jesus. They ate the Last Supper. They knew it all. They sat in there waiting and they still didn't get it. And he told us to wait. Maybe he's coming back. He went to heaven, but maybe he'll come back. Until suddenly the Holy Ghost blew in that room. When that breath of God blew in that room, all of them understood exactly the purpose why they were born. They knew exactly everything he said. And they changed the whole world because the breath of God brought purpose and it changed their life. Say after me, the words that come out of the mouth of God, they will not go back to God empty. You see, when you believe that, everything in your life will begin to change. But some of you don't believe that because you're used to going to churches and you, have, you want somebody to preach you happy. So to you, a preacher is like a comedian or like an entertainer. You just, okay, talk about God. This guy talks about comedy and this guy talks about this. You don't understand. But every time you come to a church, God is looking to blow into somebody's life. But most of you are hardened like Sarah. And they go like, mm, I don't know. Ha! God's going to prosper you. Ha! God's going to heal you. Ha! God is going to restore your life and God's going to bless you. Ha! That's what Sarah did. And because of unbelief, God cannot blow in your life until He finds somebody who says, God, I believe and I receive. I don't know how it's going to happen. You see, that's what Abraham did. Sarah laughed. Abraham he, I mean, he meditated for a while. Man, when you are 90 years old and God says you're going to have a baby and it will come out from you, man, you, after you check your body out, you have to meditate and think like, I don't know how that's going to happen. Man, he meditated in the Word. And every time the devil says, it's not going to happen, look at your body, look at your wife, he says, no, 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 no. He said, it's going to happen. But look at your wife. I don't care if her body is old. Look at your body. I, no, 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 no. I'm not going to look at my body. He said. Next day went by. And devil says, it's not going to happen. Because look at you. You're getting older. Your back hurts. No, 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 no. He said. Then his wife will go, honey, my body hurts. I, I, I don't even want a baby. This is just crazy. He goes, no, 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 no. He said. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? He refused to accept the, the unbelief and the negative. And he, the Bible says he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb, nor the deadness of his body. So every time his body said, you're too old, he says, no, nope, I don't receive it. Why? Because he said, are you getting what I'm saying? Look at your wife. She will never. Impossible to have a baby. No, no, no. I don't care. He said it. Somehow, she will have it. Are you here? Why was Abraham the father of our faith? Because against all the odds, he considered not the negative and he believed God. If you do the same thing Abraham did, when the doctor says, but listen, just take your medication. I know what your pastor says, but you know, I'm a doctor. Uh, 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 this is my career. Go ahead and take your drug and do this. You go like, well, you're right, just in case. If you go like, no, 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 doctor, uh, no, 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 stop it. 
God says he's my healer. Well, you know, you're not going to buy your house. You don't have a job. No, no, I, I don't care what Obama says. He is my provider. Well, you, I don't care. He is. He is. If you are just like Abraham, God will come through for you. And in a year, you will have your promise from God. Somebody raise your hands and say, in a year, if I believe, I will have my promise from the Father. But most of you do this. Well, I know God said, but. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, Brother Rich. But I'm going to have plan B just in case plan A don't work. That's like Sarah going, ha! whatever but Abraham was great because against all odds he says I don't care how old is your body I don't care if my body don't work he said it that's what faith is I don't care what I'm going through I don't care what the doctor says I don't care my, what my bank account says I don't care what anybody says I don't care what the media says I don't care what the social media says I don't care he said he said he said when you become like this let me tell you something, God will count it as righteousness and within a year you will have the promise that God said in your hand. Somebody raise your hands and say, Father, help me to believe today. Hallelujah. Consider not your present situation choose to consider only thus saith the Lord uh, you heard this sermon before but I'm telling you this now I'm trying to breathe life on some sermons you have heard for the last 40 years and if you go like oh I heard that but if you're not getting the life you're gonna die having nothing hello you, I know you heard all the sermons. I know you heard all the one-liners. Exactly. You heard them all, but you did not receive the life that came from it. That's why you're still 20 years later looking for your promise and you still haven't found it because promise don't come automatically just because they come where they are received. They have to be received. Well, Brother Rich, you said the word that comes out of the mouth of God will not return void. So what? I tell you what. God speaks and God says, I'm going to prosper you or heal you. His spirit comes out of his mouth. And he comes to Tammy, which is the person that he promised to. But Tammy happens to be too caught up in, but you don't understand, but you don't know. So guess what happens? He comes trying to get in her life. But because she's full of unbelief and buts, it bounces of her. And it goes around and it might come back 10 years later. And if she's still full of unbelief, it will bounce again. Comes back 20 years later and suddenly she lost it all and she's open to receive now. And then it comes, bam, hits her in the spirit and it comes to pass. It doesn't go back to God. It just stays around on the atmosphere until you receive it. And if you die and you don't receive it, somebody else will grab it. But the word of God will not return void unto him. Somebody said he will not return void unto him. Say it. I must grab it. I must receive it today. Are you with me? God has come to you through the years. But you're full of unbelief like Sarah. You're full of, ha! And he bounces you. But because God is a good God. Somebody say God is a good God. You see, his word goes around and maybe comes back five years once again. But God gives you five years or God gives you a year or a month for you to get out of unbelief come to a place that says God I know now and when he comes around this time he hits you and this time he fulfills the purpose 
Some of you have delayed blessings, be, not because of God, but because of your unwillingness to receive the breath of life that has come to you. Because you think that it's going to be magical. It's not magical. You must believe. And you must consider not your situation. Am I talking with somebody here today? Some of you, you consider your situation too much. So God will not blow on you. Be like Abraham today. He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't care. In fact, I can bet you Abraham wouldn't even ask questions. After a while, he just ignored her. He goes, no, no, God said it. I'm I just going to wait. And one day he got up and his wife's body was made younger. One day he got up and his body was full of life. And that's when he realized the promise is here. And the child was conceived. Somebody say hallelujah. How many of you received the word that I just said today? Raise your hands and receive it for your situation. Receive it for your family, for your marriage. Receive it for your finances. Receive it for your body. Consider not your situation. Consider not the state you're in right now. But consider what God has said only. And you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something about me. God did not call me to Orlando to preach you happy. I'm not here to entertain you. I have a walk with God. I love God. I owe Him my life. And I never preach to you because I study to preach. What God does in my life and what God ministers to me, I come on Sunday and I release it to you. That's why what I say brings life to you. I'm not a professional preacher. I never, in fact, somebody told me from Hawaii, you need to learn how to put sermons together. And I say, why? So I can be as dead as you are? I say, I don't want to learn. I say, I'm happy, you know? Just get up here, open my mouth. You know, people say, you need to first make the announcements, invite the visitors, I mean, welcome. The, then you preach. And sometimes I preach, and then at the end I go, oh, who's visiting? Well, you know, I, I just follow the leading of the Spirit. And... I told the Lord I never want to become a professional preacher. And you know what the Lord says? He says, good. Because the moment I become a professional preacher, I'll lose the, the witness of the Spirit over my life. Now I'm here to tell you, God is not looking for perfect people. Because if God is looking for qualified people, I wouldn't be here tonight preaching to you. And Joe wouldn't be here today playing the keyboard. And you guys will be because you are wearing white. You look all holy. But we are the most unqualified group of people. But somehow God chose us. And God put his spirit on us and says, go and bless the world. And here we are doing that. So if you don't have a church, if you're looking for a church where not only the word of God comes alive and with power, but where the Holy Spirit moves. And a church where you can grow in your faith, you know. If you're looking for a place, join us. Because we want to establish a church in Orlando. You know, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to establish a church like the 20 churches that are, that are in town. I want to establish a book of Acts type of church. Where God speaks and the Spirit confirms with power. That's what I want. You know, I mean, if you're looking for a denomination, nice churches, there's a whole bunch of them. You know, but... Like I said, we love God and we welcome the Holy Spirit. And He's using us. The Lord says in His word, build me a habitation that I may dwell therein. And in this ministry, we are built out of two elements. The presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what worship is our source. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. The, you know, people around me and they go, well, you guys sing too long. I came here for the word. I say, go somewhere else. I'm serious. You'd be amazed how many people around me goes like, you know, uh, brother, tell me what time you begin preaching. I say, why? Because we don't want to be there for the music part. We come there for the word. And I say, you don't belong here. Because we are built out of worship in the Father. Because He's looking for worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if you're not a worshiper, God's not looking for you. Oh, hear what I just said. 
If you're not a worshiper, God is not looking for you. You are lost. But if you're a worshiper, the Father is looking for you. Hello? And then we're built on the Word and the Holy Spirit. And that's our foundation. Amen? Brother, all yours. Let the Lord use you, please. Anything you like. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name.
Jesus. Oh, you are worthy, Jesus. Oh, so worthy, Lord. Oh, you're worthy. Oh, worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, worthy is a oh, holy. I stay. In all of you, I stand, I stand in all of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in all of you, I stand. Just open up your mouth and just worship him tonight. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, God, we worship you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Surround me, oh, God. Surround Raise our hands to the Lord. Surround me, please. Surround, Surround me. me. Oh, Lord. Make it your prayer tonight, people Surround of God. Surround me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Surround me. Softly, please, surround me, oh Lord, oh, 
Surround me, God. Surround me, Lord. Surround. And let your presence, God, fill this place. Father God, let this be the night where every believer receive healing and deliverance. That those that are bound will be set free by your power. Where those that are desperate will encounter the touch of the power of Almighty God. Where you will break curses bondages lies from the enemy out of their souls and their minds where you bring deliverance to the captives restoration to the fallen salvation to the lost and empowerment to your children in the name of Jesus Father let your healing power flow through this house tonight bringing deliverance in Jesus name somebody say amen take your seats if you will please the presence of the Lord is beautiful here today honestly how many of you can sense the presence of the Lord here today no joke and I'm gonna share one verse only that I feel the unction of the spirit in that verse I feel that God is gonna bring deliverance to many of you sometimes we think that our problem is always the pain in your body you know people says well my back hurts my this you know but that really is not the problem because when your soul is bound and is damaged your body will feel the consequences of a damaged soul and let me explain that when your soul is full of the fire and the wholeness of God when your body begins to malfunction your soul will quicken that body do you hear what I just said because as a man believes in his heart hello so is he I have a friend, an evangelist, his name is Roger Webb, a man of God, used greatly of God. A few years ago, he had a big cancer tumor in his belly. And the tumor grew up to be like a pregnant woman. He went to the doctor, and the doctor says, Roger, you have cancer or a tumor. And he told him all this, and he's telling me, we're driving in the car, and he's telling me, Brother Rich, while he was telling me, that I have a tumor and all the negative report whatever the doctor said to him he says I sat across his desk and all I could think was the times that I lay hands on people that had what I had and God delivered them and the more he spoke how bad he was the more things were crossing my mind saying how I did pray for somebody and got delivered and how God did this and God did that and when he was done talking the doctor the power of the words of that doctor could not discourage him because his soul was full of the fire of God so his soul stopped words from a doctor from affecting the condition that he was suffering let me explain it better when he got out he wasn't one bit discouraged he wasn't one bit afraid he went home and says God now it's you and I I preach healing you have healed through me you have delivered through me thousands of people like I have the problem now God it's you and I and the same God that through me heal others now you're gonna heal me and the man did not go back to the doctor but he believed God for his healing every day when his body will be so weak that at times he couldn't even get out of his bed 
He will remind God of his promise. He will remind God of his word. But deep on his soul, he had an anchor. This was the anchor. God healed through me before. God will heal me again. You see, if his soul was weakened, the report of the doctor would have so discouraged him that he would have died with that tumor. But because his soul was strengthened by God and he was whole by the Spirit of God, the words of the doctor and the tumor on his body could not kill him because when your soul is well, eventually your body will be well as well. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So we come to church and we go, Brother Rich, it hurts here, it hurts. You know, we, we're, we're so caught up in the pain of the body. But we don't realize that Jesus has said to us, all is well. When you believe that all is well, no cancer can ever kill you because God will make all things well. When you believe that all is well, diabetes cannot destroy you. Heart condition cannot kill you. When you believe that all is well, the tumor that is eating your body is going to have to shrink. A few months went by. He says, I was in pain for months. But I not once did I allow my mind to tell me that I wasn't going to make it. Not once did I allow people to, that were telling me, especially Christians, you need to go to the doctor. I said, not once, because I knew it with all of my heart that the same God that has healed through me was going to heal me. One day he got up and he felt a tumor shrink. And in the process of a few months, he shrunk to the point that the tumor completely disappeared. And the man came to my service once with absolute no tumor at all without one doctor touching his body not one why i was looking like did you pray what was the prayer because sometimes we think you know well you just have to pray with faith or or you have to do this or you he says no i knew deep inside the sickness has no hold of me because i knew god is a healer you see when your soul is that established in god your body eventually will have to line up are you with me but when our soul is not strengthened every pain in our body will produce fear and fear will cause us to run to get help Am I saying it's wrong to run to get help? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm telling you there is a higher way. It's the way of God. And the way of God will always work for you when you allow your soul to be established. I was recently in New York. I told you a few days ago. The power of God hit several hundred people went under the power of God. And a lady, I guess people fell on her leg and this lady comes running because she saw me. I was in the crowd praying for the sick. She comes running after service and goes, ah, and he goes, my leg. And I said, what happened? She goes, somebody fell and it hurts so bad. And I look at the leg and I go, it looks normal. She goes, but it hurts. Please, please touch it, touch it, touch it. Pray that the, pray that the pain will go away, please. And I look at her and I said, lady, look at me. She goes, please, just pray, pray. And I said, no, look at me. She goes, no, 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 pray, pray now. And I said, look at me. She looked at me and I said, lady, all is well. But it hurts. Ah, please lay your hands now. I don't know. And I said, all is well. Go to your hotel. Go to sleep. By the morning, the pain will be gone. It's just a bruise because somebody land on your leg. And she goes, you're not going to pray? I said, no, all is well. At least lay your hands on my leg. I said, no, I will not. Go to sleep. It will be well in the morning. Are you sure? And I said, I know so. She wanted me just to go make the pain disappear. And the Lord showed me her soul is weak. So she has to depend on things and on somebody at all times to do something for you. To make you feel like something is going to take place. But when your soul is strengthened 
<laughs> there will be rivers of living water that are running through you and there will be no preacher there will be doctors giving you horrendous news they could be the economy the worst ever but the rivers of living water will wash your soul and you're always finding that river that God is saying to you all is well say after me all is well but when we freak out we don't realize there's a river Jesus said from your inner being shall flow rivers of living water my goodness a river that brings water that brings to life what well, do we have to live in denial no i'm not saying you have to ignore that condition what i'm saying is establish your soul to the point that your condition will not overtake your ability to believe and trust god hello because some of you as soon as something happens your faith goes out the window and all that you abide on is the problem when you do that your soul needs to be well John third John says beloved I wish above all things that you may prosper and prospering is not talking about money prospering means progress and become and to be in a better state than what you were before that's prosperity don't think that prosperity is only money no prosperity means if i'm here today tomorrow i'm here i'm prospering and tomorrow i'm here i'm prospering because god always goes forward god never goes back if you go back you're not prospering but if you're moving forward in your life you are prospering so when God says, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper. God is saying that you move on and you grow in grace and you grow in the things that God has for your life. And be in good health. But that good health comes even as your soul prospers. God connects the good health with your soul. Even doctors know that. If you have cancer that's going to kill you, when a doctor calls you in the office, he will have a counselor or somebody waiting next door. So when he tells you, you have six months to live, it's okay. There's a counselor next door to help you. What, are you, what the counselor does? He goes, if you need some moral support. Why? Because even doctors know that your body is linked to the state of your soul. Doctors do that. Look at all this stuff that happens in school with all these kids that get shot and killed. The doctors run to rescue them. Right away there's counselors waiting to minister to their soul. Why? There's always a connection with the physical and the soul. You cannot separate them. So when God says, I wish above all things that you may, that you be in good health and that you will prosper even as your soul. If your soul prospers and gets established, your body is linked to your soul. It has to prosper and it has to become established. That's called healing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know many of you come through the years that I know you. You come desperate and you want me to touch you. And you uh, we don't mind doing that. We have a prayer team that will pray for you. But get this from the Spirit of God today. There is a better way. And the way is get established in your soul. Prosper in your soul. Believe that what God says applies to your life. And as you get established in your soul, guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to align. Next morning, the lady, I say, lady, how's your leg? Oh, it's good. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. But the night before, because she did not believe that God can keep her, she thought that the pain was going to kill her. When I said to her, all is well, I was saying, God's going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. Because if you have a broken leg, there'll be a bone sticking out. You just got bruised up. It's just like getting kicked. It hurts. You'll, you'll get over it. But her soul wasn't established. She was freaking out. God is telling you today through this man of God, get established in your faith. 
get established in your soul. It's time that you go beyond what the man can do for you. Go beyond the external. Go beyond the exterior and focus on your state of life in your soul. Focus on your ability to believe God. I say, do I trust God? Do I believe God? Do I know that his word is true for my life? Or I do not. If you do not, you better get your soul right first. When your soul aligns with God and the economy goes bad, you're establishing the fact that God is your provider. When your soul establishes in the fact that God is a healer and your body hurts, you are establishing the fact that God is and will be your healer. When your life has been strengthened, and you are going through trials and you realize that he is with me till the end and you're establishing that belief you go to the trial not freaking out because you know god is with you till the end when you establish the outcome will be always the victory that god has for you and i when your soul is not established we're running for it touch me here hurts i feel something here can you put your hand right there you know how many people do that to me? You'll be amazed. People come and say, brother, I have a pain. Come and touch me right here, right here. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right there. Now pray, pray. I'm serious. People do that here. Sometimes I laugh and sometimes I just go, get out of here. You know that if you have cancer on your breast, I can touch your cell phone and I can rebuke that cancer and you can be sitting there and you can be healed. I don't have to touch the body parts. But you think, oh, no, you touch me here. Touch me in my legs because I'm crippled. No. Be established. This is the word that I have for you before I pray for the sick. Be established in your faith. Be established in your... Well, how do I get established if I do not? Let me tell you something. Get rid of the unbelief in your life. Next week, I'm going to touch on that because I want to pray. But get rid of the unbelief. How do you get rid of the unbelief? June 7th, I'm going to be on Channel 55. Club Hours interview me. I spoke about unbelief. Very powerful. Make sure you watch it. If not, I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to put it on my webpage. But what is unbelief? Unbelief is a force that is as powerful as faith. But faith gets you to God. Unbelief gets you nowhere. So let me give you an example. I want two guys. Here, quickly. Actually, I want three guys. John, come here. Uh, uh, Mark, and one more person. You want to know how unbelief works? Stand next to each other here. Mark is the person that needs healing and deliverance. My brother here is faith in God that can do all things. And my brother here is unbelief that gets you nowhere. If God gives you a choice, because the Lord told Jairus, and he says when his daughter died, he says, only believe. Why did he say only believe? Because you have the chance to doubt. God says, don't doubt, just believe. But if Mark chooses to just believe, lock arms together if he chooses to just believe faith will pull him on the direction of the miracle he needs but if he chooses to believe now lock arms here but he still has unbelief now each of you pull to each side guess what faith is pushing unbelief is pulling he's going nowhere in his life thank you did you get that no, did, did you get that? Unbelief has the same power that faith has, but in the negative. So if you have faith in God, but you also have unbelief, faith will pull you. Unbelief will pull you, but you'll never go anywhere. That's how many of you are in your life. You believe, but I don't know. You believe, but brother rich, but. So guess what? You're going nowhere. As soon as you let go of unbelief and you choose to only believe, you begin to move in the direction of God. Somebody say, have faith in God. And you will see His glory. That's all I have to say for you tonight. Get rid of the unbelief. 
How? Through his word, through meditating in his word, and through making a conscious decision when, when your mind tells you, yes, but you go, no, 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 no. Like Abraham, no, no, there's no but. God said it, that's it. Be stubborn about the promises of God. Don't let the but arise in your mind. You say, no, I, I just going to believe. But there's no but. I choose to believe only what God says. That's how you get rid of unbelief. Raise your hands to the Lord in this house. Say after me, Father God, I choose to believe. I choose to only believe. And I know when I believe, I will see the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for every person in this house today. Every person in this house today. I pray, God, that you will bring them to a place of freedom and a place of deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just keep your hands raised. Just keep, keep yourself concentrated on God right now. In Jesus' name. See his glory. See his glory come down. In Jesus' name. I, I'm, I'm telling you, God is going to bring deliverance to many of you today. Deliverance comes in the name of Jesus. Be free today from every burden. Be free today from every fear. Be free today from every spirit of infirmity. Be free, be free today in the name of Jesus. 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 I come against every sickness and every infirmity. I come against every fear and every tormenting spirit. I come against every devil that is messing with your life in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of infirmity and bondage. And I command every sickness and death. Loose the people of God today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody with a problem in your intestines that's being healed today. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody with a, with a lump on your breast that the Lord is touching right now. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody with a problem with your female organs today. Receive the healing that comes from God. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here that's taking some kind of medication. But the medication has to do with something for your nerves. Something for your mind. For your nerves. There's some medication that you're taking even for like to rest and to sleep. Be free from that in the name of Jesus. I declare the power of the living God right now that brings healing and deliverance to your body, to your soul, to your mind. I command every bondage and every fear, every devil today, go in the name of Jesus and receive the healing that comes from God on your back. Somebody's back is being healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody's lower back. Your spine is being healed right now in the name of the Lord. There's a fear. Somebody bound to the spirit of fear today is being delivered by the power of Almighty God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to see His glory. His glory. See. Just raise your hands and receive from the Lord today. Receive from the Lord today. Somebody with arthritis on your knees being healed right now. Arthritis on your right knee is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Arthritis on your right knee is being healed now. In the name of Jesus. We're going to see His glory come down. We're gonna see His glory. See His glory. See His glory. Raise your hands to the Lord right now, people of God. The presence of the Lord is descending, bringing healing today. As we pray, our virus is being healed. Be free from our virus today. Your glory Somebody with a cane is being healed today. Come on, we're gonna see his glory. His glory. His glory. His glory. 
As we praise As your we name, is there heaven raised? His glory come down. See his glory come. Every sick person, if I call your condition. And you came here sick in your body. You have pain in your body. Quickly, jump up to your feet right now. There's an anointing to heal right now. Joe, pick up that instrument, brother. Quickly, there's somebody with arthritis on your knee. There's somebody with a back condition that I call. There's somebody with a lump on your breast. Quickly, if I call you, stand up now. There's another person with a back problem. There's like a chill going in your body. There's somebody who uses a cane. I don't know if you brought it today, but you use a cane to move around. God wants to heal that problem. I see somebody that walks around with a cane. I don't know if you brought it tonight, but there's a problem with that. Be free in the name of Jesus. There's a problem with somebody's nerves that God is touching right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In the name. Bring me this girl quickly, guys. Come on, bring me that girl. Keep that instrument now, brother. Raise your hands to the Lord, sister. I command problem to come out of you in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head all the way down to the soles of your feet be free today in the name of Jesus in the name bring me the lady brother you that are sick in your body stand up to your feet right now and get ready to be delivered today free free in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we're gonna see his glory what is wrong with you What's wrong with you? Receive today in the name of Jesus. Bring me the man quickly. I'm telling you, things are happening here right now. Bring me the man. Let the power of God free now in the name of Jesus. Bring me the lady. In the name of dear sister God is gonna deliver you today free in the name of Jesus there's too many things on this girl you came with her your sister there's a whole load of things on her life from her nerves to her legs to her heart the palpitates pick her up there's somebody here that has some form of a cancer cells Sister, what? Tell me one of the things that you're going through in your body. Everything you said. Everything I said. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Stretch your hands and pray. I command that devil to come out now. Now. Free now. In the name of Jesus. Think of this man. What is wrong with you, sir? What is wrong with you, sir? I'm just going through a battle. <laughs> Look at me. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of the Lord. Pick up that lady here. Something is going on here. Your sister's going to be delivered. Let me tell you something. Dear sister, receive the healing of the Lord in your body and in your nerves. Pick up this lady here. Eddie, are you here? Dear sister, you should be dead by now it is God that has kept you alive literally sister from the top young lady from the top of your head all the way to your feet you need God to heal you what's going on with your blood I got he hepatitis too. you got hepatitis stretch your hands to this lady sister, young lady you're going to feel the fire of God on your body stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost come on I command that devil to come out of this body. I command that devil to come out of this body now. In the name of Jesus. Loose her now. 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 Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus. You sent your word that healed my disease. Free. You are the Lord. 
Raise your hands and just worship the Lord today. Perfect song. You, you are, are the God that He lived me. You are the Lord. Be free today. Healer. I command the hepatitis to go. Yeah. You free. Sent your word that Eddie, what happened, sister? Put the microphone there, brother. What's an going alcoholic. on? Huh? She's an alcoholic and God is delivering her. God is delivering her right now. There's a devil coming out of her. Touch now in the name of Jesus. The power of God is flowing here. Raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Pick up this lady. God's going to deliver him from that devil. Come on, raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. I command that devil to come out of your body now. I command that devil to come out. You spirit of addiction, come out of this woman now, now, now. Go now in the name of Jesus. You are the God that He lives. You are the Lord, my healer. Take your word. Touch now, touch now, touch now. Pick up this lady here. I'm telling you, this lady is not only being set free, but this lady is being healed today. The, you come here with pain in your body? Yeah. Where is the pain? It was in my legs, and the Lord told me to kneel on my give me that on my on the floor. When I kneel on the floor, I got up, and the pain was gone. Fire now! Pick up that jacket. Pick up the jacket. You are the God that He left me. You are the Lord. My healing. That lady needs to be delivered. She's being delivered right now. Pick her up. You, you sent your word. Your word and, and you heal. heal my Come and walk towards me. Touch now you in the name of Jesus. The Lord, my you are the God. You are the God. That, that healed. Raise your hands to the Lord. Believe. You are the Lord, my healer. Come here, lady. Come here. You sent your word and you heal my disease. You are the Lord. What is wrong with you? My problem is emotional. I have also, I have three brothers in prison. Put your hands on mine, dear sister, and close your eyes. I release the power of God now. It brings freedom to you and your family in Jesus' name. Bring me the lady here. Give me the microphone for a second. Thank you, Eddie. Come here. You came here with pain in your body? Yes. What was the pain? Well, it takes my legs and sometimes it takes all my body, but it was only on my legs. Today. Is the pain still on your body now? No. When did the pain leave you? I left when I was praising God. He told me to get on my knees. And I kept up fighting with him because I was So while you were praising God, the Lord told you to get on your knees up there yeah. and the pain that you had left you. You see, the, you, you see what the presence of the Lord can do? While he was leading worship, somebody raised your hands and said, Thank you, Jesus. Dear sister, you are not going to be the same after today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare deliverance to your life and for the Lord to give you brand new kneecaps for His glory today. Lord God, clean her blood and make this woman whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pick up the sister. You are the God that He left me. You are the Lord, 
my healer. You send your word. You, you send your word. And you heal my disease. You are the Lord. My What's been going on with you, lady? I was actually um, healed from hepatitis and stage four and stage three. So you had hepatitis and so did your sister? Yes, I um, was supposed to go to a protocol and um, a trial. And when they called me, I was not a candidate and I threw my buckle down on my knees and I cried out to the Lord because it's been 20 years. And I said, okay, God, I waited seven years for this new treatment that came out in the market. You just take me your way, but let me get burned. I'm going to trust you with everything I got. Because <laughs> if you kept me this far, you'll keep me longer. And then when I, they called me again, they told me it was only two times for the test. The second time after I, I gave it all to God, I've been giving it to God, but that day it was just like my whole continence when they told me I was... And what like, happened to that? So they were, I went to the to the treatment and they started me June third and then they told me come back in seven days because you got a triple dose going in your body and we just want to see that your body it could take it but when I went back they never found it I've been home for a year and a I half mean. raise your hands to the Lord dear sister God still needs to that's what the Lord is doing the Lord is cleansing you today and delivering you today somebody say fire fire now upon you sister be filled with it Whoa. the power of God is going to hit this place in an awesome way pick up this man here get ready the power of God's gonna hit touch now in the name of Jesus <laughs> is this your husband uh, a lady pick him up is this your husband what's what's going on with you um, I, I, <laughs> it's a Lord he don't know what's going on the power of God is filling him to it let me share with you 2002 you came to a small meeting in Lakeland <laughs> who did? you did I came to Lakeland I believe it was Zach Smith and, oh yes and, and, and Pat was there and, and he pulled me out and I didn't ask the Lord he just just, it was my first healing that I received <laughs> and it was three things he would he had called me out and you know now it's the third time again hello oh, spluck, and it was, <laughs> the healing power I was under attack <laughs> and I had never had a migraine before and, and I had went to a meeting prior to that and I came and I came I just came to help serve and you called me out and, and you said this dark cloud was over you and I was going from you and, and then you picked me up again and you said there's something going on and I said there's 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 I'm having nightmares I just lost some property and I'm, I'm having nightmares of being on this property that it's all gone I prophesied all that on you yes and, and, and you said that's going and then you picked me up and it was my very first healing I was new 2000 one was when I was saved but 2002 I was just hungry for God and he peeled me without me asking through you and it was like what God had for, for me he just and what happened? You, you healed my leg was healed that was my first healing and what happened today today I, I just feel like I'm heaviness is lifting and, and I've been through a battle I've been fighting throughout the years and it's like I, I need more of him brother the Lord is doing it today in Jesus name somebody said thank you Jesus the presence of the Lord is awesome here 
Come here, you lady standing up. Come on. Come on. What do you need from God? Deliverance from fear, depression, anxiety. Are you taking any kind of medicine? I have. You have? Quite a few years. Didn't I say there was somebody taking the stuff? Remember when I said that, the word of knowledge? This is the lady. Stretch your hands towards her right now. Shut your hands and pray. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to come out of you right now in the name of Jesus. By the word that came from God of your deliverance today will set you free by the power of Almighty God. Loose her today! In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Be free right now. power of God is awesome here would you raise your hands and just give God the glory today for his presence that's awesome here today his presence is awesome here today bring me the ex-husband right there somebody quickly bring me the ex-husband come here brother just let him stand right here raise your hands to the Lord brother let the power of the Holy Ghost fill you today The presence of the Lord is beautiful here today. There is a wind that's blowing all over this auditorium. Pick up the lady quickly. Stay put. I rebuke every spirit of bondage. I command it to come out of you in the name of Jesus. Pick her up again. You lying spirits. We break your stronghold on this woman's life. We command that devil to come out right now. Loose her now and let her go. That's it. It's gone. That's it. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on. Holy, holy. You know. Raise your hands to the Lord and just wave it in his presence. Hallelujah. This section quickly stand up to your feet this section stand up quickly join your hands together and raise them up together just like join your hands together just softly and raise them up because I see on top of you a wind of God moving I see it on top of you I see it on top of you receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I release it now receive it in the name of Jesus receive it today in the mighty name of Jesus I'm telling you, people of God, just raise your hands and just worship the Lord. This section, stand up quickly. This section, stand up to your feet quickly. Join your hands together and raise them up softly. Come on. Just, you can stay down, mama, if you want. Come on, raise your hands quickly because there is a wind right now blowing. Are you ready for it? In the name of Jesus. Now, receive it. Receive it now. Come on, raise your hands and just drink it in today. Drink it in today. Come on. Worship. Drink it in today. Drink it in today. This last section, quickly stand up to your feet. Come on. Join your hands together now. You gotta do it now. Are you ready in the name of Jesus? Receive it now. Fire now upon you. Fire now upon you. Come on. Holy, holy. Raise your hands and just drink it in, drink it in, drink it in.
Just drink in His presence. His presence that brings healing and deliverance. If you seek the reality of truly knowing God, it's yours for the taking. From the time of the first sin in the Garden of Eden, men and women everywhere have been striving to regain that lost relationship. Jesus gave his life on the cross as a payment for your sin and to restore your fellowship with God. And it's yours just by believing it's true. That's what God calls faith. Will you take that first step right now? From your heart, pray this simple prayer and God will do the rest. God, I now know that I am a sinner in need of forgiveness and redemption. I accept Christ's sacrificial death. Receive your forgiveness. Turn my back on the sinful life I've lived and trust you to make me new. I pray in Jesus' name according to your promise. Because of the faith you've just expressed, you have begun a new life and an amazing relationship with the living God. Your next step is to read the Bible, talk to the Lord every day, and join a growing number of believers who log on to richvira.com. Here, you'll find things to help you grow in Christ. There are also service times and directions for the next prophetic healing service, video clips, and news of other events. So log on now to richvira.com. You can also write Voice of Healing, P.O. Box 2005, Orlando 32802. And be sure to watch again for Rich Vera's program, Voice of Healing.